following video is a general overview of the benefits of environmental testing and environmental test chamber basics. Thermotron is the largest manufacturer of environmental test equipment in North America. First, I will go over a few key terms associated with reliability testing. Design validation, product validation, environmental stress screening, and product life cycle testing are four of the most popular tests used for environmental testing. Design validation testing is done to ensure that a product will function in the normal environment it will encounter during its life cycle. It is specification driven and can be done in the R&D phase and or during the production phase. The goal is to pass the test and meet the specification without any failures, and the result is a robust product. The purpose of product validation is to ensure that the product meets the requirements, specifications, and regulations for which it is intended. The product validation procedure uses simulations si similar to those of design validation to foresee faults or gaps in the design or manufacturing stages that might cause failures when consumers are using the product. Environmental stress screening uses a variety of different stresses such as thermal cycling to force latent defects in a newly manufactured or repaired product or component, typically electronic. The latent failures represent catastrophic or permanent failures. The surviving products or components are assumed to have higher reliability than a similar unscreened population. Product life cycle testing simulates real world stresses in order to predict the lifespan of the product. Thermotron manufactures for these four types of tests by simulating actual field environments like temperature and humidity. Many products go through standard testing procedures that are widely accepted, including those from the military, IEC, UL, and IEST. Thermotron's 8800 programmer controller includes 10 pre-programmed tests, including four mil standard and three IEC profiles as shown on the slide. This figure is from MIL standard 810G method 5075, and the procedure is called aggravated cycle. Its purpose is to subject a product to elevated temperature and humidity conditions. The cycle begins with 95% relative humidity at 30 degrees Celsius, and then it heats up to 60 degrees Celsius. Then, the temperature stays at 60 degrees Celsius for six hours. Next, we cool down to 30 degrees Celsius and soak at that temperature for four hours. After that, we turn the product on and allow it to soak at the same temperature for another four hours. Notice that we maintain a 95% relative humidity throughout the entire cycle. After this first cycle is complete, taking 24 hours total, it is ready to be repeated. It is important to test products for reliability prior to releasing units into production. Ensuring that products can reliably withstand various environmental conditions will reduce costs associated with recalls and warranties. Product testing can also give you a competitive advantage because it helps in designing and manufacturing a more robust product that is ready for consumer use. Reliability testing also helps users meet supplier requirements. The most common types of environmental testing include temperature and humidity, on which this presentation will focus. Other common types of testing include halt and hass, altitude, and vibration. Here are some major markets that benefit from product reliability testing. Defense, aerospace, consumer electronics, automotive, and telecommunications. Just about any piece of electronic equipment will need testing to ensure that it will properly work in any climate it encounters. Here is an example of how a typical chamber is laid out. First, we'll go over the chamber on the left. Starting clockwise with the serial communications panel, you'll find the control system right above it. Next, on the top right is where chamber pressures are released through the exhaust relief vent. Next is an access port that allows wires and thermocouples to be placed on the product under test and hooked up to data acquisition equipment on the outside. Lastly, casters allow for easy chamber maneuvering. Turning to the chamber on the right, let's start from the top. Now looking to the inside of the chamber, you will see there are two lights allowing visual access to the inside of the chamber. On the ceiling of the chamber, you will find the movable product temperature control thermocouple, an electronic hu humidity sensor, and an air baffle that supplies the air over the product under test. The controlled thermocouple is also located on the ceiling. 
The white arrows represent the airflow as it is directly distributed over the product and the air returns from the chamber floor. The humidity system is located on the right side cabinet and the compressors and condensers are housed in the front cabinet. Now I'll go over a few chamber component definitions. A thermocouple is a movable device that measures temperature. Product temperature control maximizes stress on the product through the chamber's control system and optimized airflow. Airstream control measures the air temperature at the outlet source of the air supply. Product temperature control measures the product's temperature. Cascade refrigeration systems consist of two compressors that allow the chamber to go to minus 70 degrees Celsius. Single-stage refrigeration consists of one compressor that allows the chamber to typically go to minus 40 degrees Celsius. The chamber's refrigeration system can be cooled in one of three ways. Chambers with six horsepower compressors or smaller can be cooled with an onboard air or water-cooled condenser. Chambers with six horsepower compressors or larger can be cooled with either water-cooled or remote air-cooled condensers. Remote air-cooled condensers are typically placed outside, either on top of the facility or on the ground. The purpose of all condensers is to draw the heat away from the compressors and other refrigeration system components. The dry air purge option enables reduced moisture operation at low temperatures and dew points at minus 40 degrees Celsius. The system consists of a flow meter, regulator, and control solenoid for program operation. It utilizes compressed air as the supply source and is very helpful in minimizing moisture in the chamber. Gaseous nitrogen is an alternative to dry air purge. Its purpose is to minimize the moisture level inside the chamber. Liquid nitrogen boost enables faster pulldowns and dissipation of heat from the product. An oxygen monitor or monitors can be added to the chamber or test lab to monitor oxygen levels. It also features an alarm if a depleted oxygen environment exists. Basic humidity systems have a few components. An electronic humidity sensor gives high quality responses and is very accurate at low humidity levels. It doesn't require as much maintenance as a wet bulb dry bulb system. A wet bulb dry bulb system can require frequent replacement of wick socks and the dirty water from the test can clog the humidity system. The steam generator produces high volumes of moisture and water vapor consistency, which is good for transitions. The water bath system can't generate high volumes of moisture and has poor low humidity control due to the water in the bath. However, it is good for steady state testing. The dew point is the temperature to which air must be cooled for it to reach saturation. For more information on Thermotron, please visit thermotron.com, email info at thermotron.com, or call 616-393-4580.